Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another episode of Afghanistan by Afghans, where you get to meet another Afghan, I should say amazing Afghans, especially in this case uh, of meeting Neda John today, uh, a painter, speech therapist, and, and kind of multifaceted character who we will get to learn about her life and, and, and kind of dig in. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to make sure you guys know that we are almost in episode 35 or even more. So definitely check out some of those other conversations. Uh, there's so much and, and to learn and, and, and to gain from this series in terms of learning about Afghanistan and Afghans. Uh, and each episode, uh, I try to introduce you to a new character um, who um, brings yet another layer to the story of uh, Afghans and Afghanistan. And um, today, uh, definitely this layer and this story will hopefully add some uh, beauty to the story uh, as he has a artist who does amazing and beautiful uh, paintings and and beautiful work so uh, without further ado Neda John welcome to the show thank you for being here thank you so much for having me and um, it's always a pleasure to that you reached out to me and I'm very honored to be a part of this of course so um I ask this question from everyone, and it's a great question to start with, which is basically the journey of yourself and your family from Afghanistan to where you are. Um, I know it starts uh, during the Russian Revolution, so let's uh, yes. uh, so tell us. Tell us how did and, and why did your family move out of Afghanistan? So it's uh, interesting. I could write a story about this. I mean, eventually I can write a book. Uh, we were the original... Um, you know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of us uh, out there, original refugees that came out of Afghanistan. So at the time when Russians invaded, one of the first things that they were looking for, all the people that were directly involved with the government. And at the time, my dad was a Supreme Court judge uh, for the pre President Dawood Shah. And I had uh, my uncle was a general um, during that time. And my other uncle was a foreign prime minister during the Zoya Shah. So my family was a target and they were looking for everybody that was directly involved. And I, lucky for my father that he passed away. He was out of, out of the country, but he passed away during that time. So my mother's job was to protect my brother because they were also looking for any boy who never um, attended or, or went to military. They were picking out all the boys to go to military. And he didn't go to military because of my uncle's connection to the government. And so, and I was uh, just a minor. I was 13 years old. All my other siblings were out of Afghanistan. So my mother made a point of getting me and my brother out of Afghanistan illegally. So because he, she had connection, we had to kind of leave everything behind house, bank account. We just took a one suitcase and left the country um, to come to Pakistan. And Pakistan at the time was one of the first countries that were allowing refugees to come in, Afghan refugees. So that's all a uh, big story in a short uh, couple. In a short, yeah. And then from that, uh, did you, from Pakistan, I, I know that's the story of people who are in Pakistan are, of course, in, in different levels of society, depending on the socioeconomic background, starts from people going into camps to people renting homes um, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, what was you guys' stay in Pakistan like? And then how long did you stay there before you moved out? So since we had some family members and we had people that we know, so we stayed with them when we got to Pakistan. And from there, we applied for um, becoming a political refugee. And one of the first countries that was accepting political refugees were Germany. And we got accepted because of my parents, my father's background, because of my family background. So they accepted us. My One of my sisters were already in Canada and the other one was in, Ger in, Af in uh, America. She was married to an American Italian here. And one other sister was in Japan. So it was just me, my brother, and my mom, and his wife and one young child. So we came to Germany from Pakistan because that was one of the first countries that allowed us to, to join. And in Germany, we were given, the government gave us a housing, they gave us um, allowance because we kind of started with zero. 
we came out of the country with just a suitcase. Um, and in you know, Pakistan, we were supported by family. But when we came to Germany, the government helped us and we, they saturated us with housing and taken care of. Like, and then we stayed there for five years and I went to language school because at the time we weren't sure where we were going to end up. So we couldn't start any kind of schooling, especially with the language being so difficult. And I went to language school just to learn German for the five years that I stayed there. Oh, wow. So you speak German as well. I do, but I'm, I can read better than I can speak uh, because mm -hmm. uh, with languages, I'm sure you know, you have to really think the language to be mm -hmm. able to fluently speak it. And it was at the time I was thinking in Farsi, translating it in German. It was just a chaotic situation. So I just kind of give up. But I did learn it by the by end of the fifth year, I was speaking fluently German. And now coming to America, I had to start all over again with the English. With English, yeah, yeah. I mean, Germany, I wanted to note was, a, I believe, the second, post the second largest Afghan population outside yes. of Asia. Uh, uh, I think U.S. being the largest and Germany being the second largest. Um, when, when you guys lived there, was there a specific area where all the Afghans lived? Um, how were you received so, those five uh, years in Germany? I don't remember. We, we lived in a little city called Erfstadt, which is about 20 kilometers away from Köln. So it wasn't, it was more like a suburb. It wasn't like in the main city. And the, the Afghans were spread out. They weren't all in one area. So we were, we happened to get housing there. And we, me, my mom and my brother and his wife and kid, we were there for a good amount of time for the five years that we lived there. And I know my cousins and everybody else that when they came to, to Germany, they were either in Hamburg and Frankfurt and Köln. So they were like spread out everywhere. So, um, I don't, I think there were like few other Afghan families to where we were situated. And I believe me, I don't remember, <laughs> but I know there was at least three or four other families that were yeah. in the area that we were situated. Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the main causes of displacement and becoming refugee is that the whole family gets spread out everywhere. And and as you were describing your family, that kind of comes to mind as like, wow, your family is one of those families with sisters and brothers and, and uncles yeah. being everywhere. Um, and and that's one of the major things people lose, you know, uh, when they're displaced. Yeah, um, and you know, I I can I consider myself one of the lucky ones because. Uh, I didn't go to these uh, refugee camps. I didn't experience any of the things that the refugees are experiencing now. So, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> definitely. That's that's definitely a privilege. And and of course, you know, you, can't, you came from like a very privileged um, background, you know, in your family in Afghanistan as well. Mm -hmm. So um, that played its part. Um, now coming to San Diego, which is a city which we both kind of call home as well. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I, uh, we were talking about how I grew up there as well. Um, when did you kind of think about going into the field of speech pathology uh, initially? Uh, so, was it, yeah, how did, or, or what was kind of your education background before that? So I have to kind of tell you about how I made it from Germany to, to U.S. Okay. And at the time, U.S. Uh, was not accepting political refugees. And the only way that you could make it uh, here is if you, somebody sponsored you. And because my sister lives in Chicago and her husband was American, um, American Italian and they were living there. So she is the one who sponsored us to come to U.S., we came to U.S. and Chicago was my first base. Actually, I call Chicago my home because that was uh -huh. the very first place that I stepped uh, in when I came to um, U.S. And then Virginia. So we went to live in Virginia, Chicago. And then how I made it to San Diego is because my sister's husband got relocated from Chicago to San Diego. And that's how I made it here. So when I made it to San Diego, I was at the time already... Uh, had finished high school in Virginia. Um, I was kind of like put, I, you know, I started high school. I should have been in college by the time I came here, but because of the language, uh, that I didn't really know that my, one of my counselors in high school suggested that I should repeat one of the grades just to like learn the language, the basic of language when I was in, uh, in school, be high school before I go to college. So when I came to San Diego, I started out 
um, just a basic junior college, Mesa College. And from there, I went, I got accepted into San, uh, San Diego State. Uh, I went to San Diego State and then I kind of stumbled upon, like I knew I wanted to work with people and I didn't want a job that's like a nine to five job to sit around. I wanted to help out as much as I could with people. And I stumbled upon speech pathologies and I didn't know what speech pathology was until I took a class at San Diego State with a, a teacher who was a speech therapist and who came with stories every day and how she helped each each uh, child or each patient that she had to where they could communicate their wants and needs. And I got very excited about that and I wanted to do that. And right now I work at elementary school at Poway Unified. And I've been doing that for the past 20 some years, almost 20 years. And um, I enjoy, I love my job because I work with um, young kids from preschool to fifth grade. And a lot, all of them have communication issues and some of them have some major behavior issue, but I take that upon, I, I take that as a challenge. It's a very challenging job, especially after COVID. It's been very challenging because these kids really didn't um, respond to the visual, to the virtual learning as much as what we wanted to. So we see all that um, backfiring now. So kind of we're seeing all the issues now, but, uh, I love it, and I enjoy working with this population. Yeah, uh, my my neighbor, one of my neighbors, is actually a speech pathologist, or or works with, I should say, um, kids with learning disabilities, and was saying the same thing you were saying that uh, doing it on Zoom was not was not easy. It was a major um, challenge for us, uh, for me, challenge. a challenge for kids too. Wow, wow, and and you did two years of that. Oh, a year and a half, yeah, we did yeah. all these wow. two years because wow. when we went back, we were some some kids were they were giving choices to the students if they wanted to be in person or virtual, and mm. some families chose to be virtual. So I was getting on Zoom, and then I would go see kids in the office, and it was like back and forth. So it was a uh, yeah, two years, crazy two yeah, years. That's two crazy two years. Uh, you, you know, the the choice of this specific profession, um, and, and as I talk to other Afghans, and I see. A lot of Afghans choosing professions that are community focused, wanting to give back in a way to the community and help. And I wonder, uh, does that have anything to do with being Afghan and, and having the country being, um, you know, being from a place where uh, everybody did need help or people or people help each other in that sense? I wonder if. Uh, you can shed some light whether being an Afghan had anything to do with um, why you went into doing, into this. Actually, no. I think it's more like a personality thing. Like I, I know my, I knew from get go that I don't want to be stuck in an office. I did, I did that kind of a job. I worked in a bank and I worked in different uh, fields. I worked at the hospital, and uh, even though that hospital was kind of like we're helping with people, but I knew I didn't want to be stuck to those kind of hours that they were providing. I knew I wanted to help people get from point A to point B. And um, that I think it's that my personality. I'm not one of those people can just kind of sit on a computer and do something. I want to go out, I want to communicate, I want to talk to kids. And kids, especially kids, I worked at high school level too, but I really enjoy working at uh, elementary level because they, they love you unconditionally. They bring the kind of joy to you that it's no other. And even if they show behavior and they hit you, because I get hit a lot by students, you can't really hold that against them mm. because that's how they communicate. I see that as, that's, a, that's a way of communication. He, he, this kid is trying to tell you something. If mm. he's hitting you, he's mad at something, he's trying to tell you something. So you cannot possibly get mad at them. And that's why I think that I enjoy the most is just working with this population because no matter what, you just like I, today they get mad at you, tomorrow they come and they hug you and they kiss you and they want to they wanna be around you. So mm -hmm. it's just that unconditional love that you receive. Yeah. Yeah. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. So since it has to do with your personality, obviously the other aspect of your personality or character is your art, um, yes. which, is, which is kind of what connected us. 
Um, tell me, how did this transition from what you were doing work-wise happen to art or did the two simultaneously grow? When was the first time you kind of began to start painting? So art, <laughs> I uh, wanted to, ever since I was a kid, I loved art. My brother used to, um, and he, he, now he doesn't do it that much when he was younger, he used to just paint on his wall. And that, that like in his room, he would just create something on his wall. And I used to be like, just sit there and watch him do it. My mother was a teacher. My mother was a home, home economics teacher, basically for high school. So, which is a little bit different. And she was teaching them like just basic things that the girls need to know. And also she was a tailor. So she had her own tailoring shop with my aunt and they used to design clothing themselves. And they would, she would not look at a pattern. She would just make something off of her own, design something. And I, that was another way of like, she would draw uh, yeah. all these designs and it's like whatever flowers or whatever that needs to go on the, on the, on the design itself. And that was like another way for me to like be close to art. So art was always a part of me. But when I came, uh, when I started doing art here, I kind of on and off was doing it, but job didn't allow me because I didn't have that kind of a freedom. So in 2014, my mother got sick very much in 2013. And then when she passed away in 2014, that really took me in a really bad place. Like for six months, I was kind of like, because I'm usually a very happy go lucky person. I don't get upset, but doesn't, it takes a lot to like get me upset. I was in a really bad place. And one of my friends suggested that I should try art, try go back to art. So, um, I, she found this uh, amazing, uh, artist, an Iranian artist that who was teaching art out of her, uh, place in La Jolla. And, um, I called her and I said, okay, I want to come and l paint, learn how to paint. So when I went to her, um, I just told her that I don't want to start from the beginning because I feel like I need to just start where I need to start because I already had a little bit of background. Mm -hmm. So I would bring my art of pieces that I found that I wanted to paint. And I said, these are, and I, from that get go, I was always wanted to draw and paint, uh, about people in Afghanistan because culture, because I didn't really grow up there. I was only there for like a short amount of time. I was always drawn to Afghan culture and the clothing and the beauty and all of that, that goes with it. Mm -hmm. And so I would find these pictures and I would bring it to my teacher and I said, I want to paint this. So I started just painting with her once a week for three hours in the class. And then every day at home for three hours, three, four hours practicing. And mm -hmm. that's where I came across. And uh, I wanted to just share one more thing about that is in 2017, I got invited uh, with my uh, from my cousin, my cousin who is in Orange County, and she works with she was working with nonprofit organization. She invited me, so why don't you come to this uh, organization to the event and bring your art and see if you would maybe you will sell. I, I wasn't planning on selling anything; I was just doing it and I was giving it away to my f family and friends. So I, when I went to this event, I was. Um, over, I was overwhelmed with the joy, like how people reacted with my art and how much um, support I got from Afghan community, that they really loved my art. And I saw a few pieces there and I uh, was so excited about this and that I joined, the, joined my cousin with the organization and I said, okay, if I'm going to sell my art, then I want part of my proceeds to go toward um, helping, uh, helping children in Afghanistan. So that's what I've been doing since 2017 with the mm -hmm. organization that I'm at. So whatever I sell, whether I'm in an event or if I sell something online, and I am a, a member of that organization as helping, uh, it's um, uh, International Orphan Care, IUC. So um, I sell, I my focus is education for kids in Afghanistan and for um, uh, for for women, basically, who don't have uh, support. And... Um, because I feel like the way to get rid of poverty is education. Right, right. I know right. there's a lot of it in Afghanistan. So whatever I donate, I make sure, and they have schools in Jalalabad and they have schools in, uh, I think, Herat. And then I, they also have people, we have volunteers that are in those three provinces that 
we right. sent it to them and they, they spread it out to all these needy families. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful that you've kind of connected your art uh, to, to charity and to giving. Yes. Um, I, I wanted to ask some technical questions about your art, uh, mostly in terms of um, what medium, uh, what are you using uh, in terms of paint and, and uh, are there oils and are, uh, what are you using? Kind of, yeah, and your, the technical aspects of it a little bit. So I, uh, I can, I use acrylic and I use, I do pencil work, but my passion goes toward oil. I love oil painting. It's just the richness of the medium itself. Like each painting that I do, and I can, um, you can, I can show you a few of them right now if you want me yeah. to. Um, they have at least six, seven layers of paint over it. So, um, and I, and I feel like I want, I know that Afghanistan is known for a lot of sorrow and a lot of uh, sad things, but my whole purpose of painting is that I uh, want to show the other side of Afghanistan. That is not just sorrow, there's happiness. And within each picture that you may be seeing sadness, but you also see happiness, you also see hope. And that's what excites you. So oil painting, I think, I feel like that brings out um, my true feelings about how I uh, how I feel about my art. I fall in love with my art. Every every piece that I make, I fall in love with it. So. <laughs> I mean, we didn't plan this, but since you offer it, please do show us a piece if you have one around you. I know uh, yeah. you're Actually, there's... Without moving the camera. Oh, there it is. Yeah, because... A few of them there. Yes. Um, then I can show you this one. This is the one that was behind me. Yeah, yeah. We started with this. Oh, wow. So yeah. beautiful. So it's... Uh, the, yeah. the death. It's, That's the it's drum. It's different, um, drum. different things. And I, can, and I, I also wanted to show you some of my... Uh, this was one of the ones that I did. This is like my pencil work. So this is, I did this as a support to Iranian women, uh, Afghans supporting Iranian women. So it kind of like shows both both countries. So this, oh. is, a, this is a colored pencil. That's so, recent. Okay. A little bit. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. It, it, that's a recent one. I haven't seen that on your social media. Have you shared that? Yet? Yeah, I have this one on yeah. I started, I did this one, like, I think in September, right? When this uh, whole thing started with the woman life freedom situation. Okay. I did that one in September. So yeah, you'll see it on my um, okay. Instagram. Okay. You Got to go back and, and check that. And, and I would, uh, we would put the links to your social media as well on the description. Yes. So those who have liked her art, the little tease that we saw here, please go ahead and check out more of that. Yes. Um, so Neda John, we uh, I want to kind of get into the themes of your your work as well because that's definitely important. You kind of mentioned the concept of Afghanistan, but also portraits and the joy. Tell us a little bit about some of the recurring themes in your art. Um, the recurring themes basically, I like music and I like dance and I like so those are the ones that I get I get gravitate toward uh, a lot. So anything that has to do that brings out the music portraits, definitely I love. So I've been done, doing a lot of portraits of our, um, our, some of our favorite, um, you know, singers, Afghan singers. So when I go to a concert, I feel like I want to give as a present to a, from my organization, because sometimes what they do is they allow me to have a table there with no charge and they allow me to raise money and they allow me to sell my art. So that was my appreciation and my um, organization's appreciation to the artist that is allowing me to do that. So I've been doing portraits of them. And uh, so it's, I don't really have like a theme per se, but I go toward uh, anything that brings me, brings a smile to your face or brings, makes me smile. And that's basically, and I've done some non-Afghan art. And right now um, I was a part of uh, an, an American gallery for like past couple of years. And I just left that one and I started doing another gallery that's in Oceanside. So that was also dance team. They had a, some kind of a, show with ballet. So I had two ballet dance pieces that I took there that hang there yesterday, actually. So um, I guess, uh, yeah. no, and I like Buskeshi. So Buskeshi is another one. I did a few of those. And every time that I make one, uh, yeah. people love it. And I saw, so far, I saw like three or four of those. So it's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, Bus Buskeshi for the audience are Afghanistan's national sport. Uh, and um, yeah. 
uh, the recurring theme, as you were mentioning, to uh, is is joy. It sounds like it's yeah. joy seems to be a recurring theme. You would definitely want to bring that element, and it's such a needed um, theme, I should say, in our community right now. I mean, yeah. always, but uh, always in all the communities. But uh, right now, you know, we definitely need that. So really appreciate you kind of bringing that through your art. Um, Thank you. That, that pieces of joy through the art, um, because those who are inside Afghanistan, you know, I mean, it'll be very hard to to tap on tap in joy uh, in yeah. such harsh conditions, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and to those who, of us who are uh, provided the opportunity, it's beautiful that you are kind of tapping and exploring that. So um, I, I appreciate it definitely. That's what Thank attracted you. me <laughs> to your art. Thank you, and I think. Um, a lot of my audience, they say that because because it brings me smile and it makes me happy because I come home after a really hard day of work. I come home and that's what I kind of forget everything that happened. I can throw myself into my art and makes me smile and I put my music on. And um, funny you say that like a lot of my a lot of the people that they see my art and they purchase it, they connect with it right away and they say they see my feelings in my art. Mm -hmm. So it makes me happy to know that they see what I felt during yeah. when I was making that piece. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's definitely depth in it Be beyond joy. There's multiple emotions going on. Of course, these are not like, uh, I should say very surface level joy or happiness. It's really a lot of depth into it, but yeah. anyways, those, those who can, you know, we'll go ahead and check it out. Um, as we kind of, I owe it all to my wonderful, amazing teacher, Nasreen Khairi, and I recommend whoever wants to take classes with her, I absolutely recommend it because she is, she is absolutely amazing. That's great. That's great. Um, I, I kind of wanted to take it a little bit uh, widen kind of our conversation to your sort of as an Afghan artist, Afghan-American artist, um, what are your sort of future goals and hopes for art uh, and Afghan culture to be preserved or promoted within now a new space and new environments. Um, how have you seen, obviously in your own art, you're able to bring uh, Afghan culture uh, by, you know, through referencing images and, and, and mm -hmm. imagery that you have, but how can other artists in your opinion um, preserve their artistic cultural heritage. I think that, but from what I see, a lot of the artists, Afghan artists that I see, they do, they already do that. So there's a few artists that they, whatever the current situation is happening in Afghanistan, they put that in their art, which is beautiful because it really informs people of what does, what's going on right now in Afghanistan. For me, is a little bit different. I, cause I, to me, like I, as I mentioned before, I want I want to make me happy. So if it's making me happy, I want somebody else to smile too. So I don't want like when I look at their art of although it's beautiful, it makes me cry and it makes me sad. So I feel like um, it's good that they are there. It's good that all of us are doing something different because if we were all focusing on the same thing like joy, then those other parts will be kind of disappearing. So people wouldn't know what's really going on. So when they are touching on those on surface of those things, and while I'm doing um, what, it, what Afghanistan meant to me when I was a kid, it was all joy and happiness growing up as a kid, then I think we have all, we will meet our goals. So my goal is um, that people will see both. They will look at, uh, the joy is part of Afghanistan, and they'll also see what's really happening there. So it's not one or the other, it's both. I mean, they are, you see these kids that are really suffering, but then you put a little music and you give them something and they're, you know, filled with joy and they start dancing and barefoot and in, on the street. So you can see, even though that they are really down at the bottom, they're still finding moments of joy. They're still finding moments that they could be happy and they put a smile on their face. So that is so beautiful. One one of the projects that every year um, that I do with the uh, international orphan care is during Eid, like which is like around March. Um, we've I've been doing this for the past uh, three four years. This idea came upon like one of our nephews 
that uh, what they were doing some kind of giving during the during that time at the masjid they were doing that and he's like why don't we do this for afghanistan kids so he is the one who kind of he was the founder of this idea and then we kind of took it upon us that we will find these families uh, like at least 50 or 60 families however much we can we can afford to like find in because our volunteers have to go in and kind of vet them out to make sure that they are in need and certain need. And then we will, um, I will raise money on during social media and then uh, whatever. So we do an art exchange. So I will have them, they will draw something, whatever they can. And then we find kids over here that they want to participate and they draw something. And the parents will probably to donate $25 per child. And those $25 will buy the kid in Afghanistan a set of clothing for eat. They'll buy them like set of maybe, uh, I don't know, like art supplies or pair of shoes. So they get that during each celebration. And then our volunteers will kind of put them together and have them draw something and they'll come up and then they'll send it to us via, um, you know, social media. And that's, that project is really dear to my heart because it's, you're introducing art and you see some of these kids that they are drawing. They draw nothing of uh, bad. They, they're either drawing the flag or they're drawing the flower and they're drawing, like some of them, they're drawing weapons, you know, so because that's what they see. So it's kind of nice to see their view of how things are. And they get so excited because during the eat time, the volunteer will play music for them and they'll bring them have them tea and cookies or whatever it is. And then they just do a little dance and then they do the exchange. So it's, uh, yeah. It brings joy. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. well. If I got anything from this interview, it's joy. <laughs> 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 to to create joy and to be joyous. Um, and on that note, I I want to thank you again for uh, being on the show for uh, having this conversation with me, and uh, hopefully the audiences who are watching have also thoroughly enjoyed it. And if there are any finishing thoughts or comments you'd like to share. Uh, you're welcome to do so. No, I, not really. The only finishing thought is that if anybody would like to um, help out and uh, become a part of the organization to um, be involved, to be involved in that. And, uh, and it's an, another American friend of mine the other day reached out to me because she knows what I do and, and co-worker. And she's like, how can I help? How can I help raise money for for your cause? And uh, so uh, we want non-Afghans to be involved and we want them to be informed. And that's my goal to, I, I feel like everybody that I uh, talk to during Christmas, I always like give a piece of my painting to coworker when we're doing the exchange. And that's my, my, my message to my non, non-Afghan non friends are to be involved, to learn about Afghanistan. It's not just about pain and suffering. There's more to it. And if you can help, in any way, step mm. up and help. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nada John, again, for being on the show. And audiences, thank you as well for listening, for watching. And there will be links uh, to Nada's artwork and her website and the organization she's talking about. And um, uh, you're welcome to check it all out. And once again, thank you very much, Nada John, for being on the thank show. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have okay. a wonderful day, and it was a pleasure meeting with you. It was a pleasure meeting you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.